Hello everyone, this is Ray Dadswell here once again, another edition of All About Eastbourne, when I talk to people who are part of organisations, charities, voluntary agencies, that type of thing, about what they do, why they do it, and all the rest. Fascinating for me, certainly. Today, Sandra Taylor is on the other end of the line, and she's talking to me about hmm, a community fridge. That's right. Sandra, nice to have you. Thanks very Thank much for being willing me. to chat with me. We think of Eastbourne as a, an affluent town, so why should a community fridge be necessary? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ray. We do think of Eastbourne as an affluent town, but like most towns, Eastbourne has its pockets of deprivation. And also with cost of living rising, you know, with heating and food and everything, all those costs rising, even people that seem on the surface to be affluent are starting to struggle with making ends meet so we felt that it was a um that there are plenty of people that would make take advantage of the community fridge idea but also it's not just about food poverty it's also about tackling food waste because a lot of the food that we get is nearing its sell by or use by date right oh I, in the back of my mind is that we've had food bank for quite a while <laughs> but since that time little pockets, little areas like yours have come along. So do you think there's going to be more need in the future? You talk about food deprivation and that sort of thing, and that's a growing problem locally. I think that's right. You know, with, with all the, um, the strains on people's purses at the moment, food, food prices are going up and not everybody is eligible to go to a food bank. Um, the community fridge is a place where people actually do pay to come and, and, and get their food. So it's a different level of need that we're providing for. Well, when I was in the church, and you're based at Victoria Baptist Church in That's Elton right. Road in Eastbourne, then I was in a few days ago and I was amazed to see all the provisions that you have set out. So what what type of supplies do you you have? It's not only the fridge, is it really? No, no, no. We have a lot of ambient food as well. So we don't really know from one week to the next what we're going to get because we pay a company called Food Share, uh, Fair Share, I beg your pardon, Fair Share Sussex, who collect surplus food from different um, stores and companies and then distribute it to charities. So we get um, an, an invoice once a week, which tells us what we're going to get. And it varies from lots of tinned food, tinned meat, soups, beans, that sort of thing. Um, this week we had a, a lot of fresh vegetables and fruit and things like pasta and um, UHT milk, which are, are good basics for people's um, store cupboards. But we also get some fresh goods to go in the fridge. So we, we get um, maybe some cheeses, some cooked meats, that sort of thing. That's brilliant. So was it your idea in the first place? Well, it was a joint project, really. It was, uh, first of all, we heard at the church that the council were looking for somewhere to base a new fridge, that they thought there was a, a need for one. And when we heard about it, we talked about it as a staff team because I work here at the church as well. And then that um, idea was taken to the core leadership team and it was agreed that we had the resources and the, the building that would be ideal for somewhere like a community fridge. So Helen, who is our um, cap finance um, manager at the church and myself, took the ball by the horns and decided that we go ahead with it. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's where it all started, really. We just felt it was a good project to follow up. And because we're in a really good position, we felt we needed to share our our building with other people. CAP, of course, stands for Christians Against Poverty. Yes. I did yes. interview Sorry. Helen Sorry. some months ago. No, yes. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So quite a lot of the folks I interview, they're connected with churches, but not everybody by any means. I try to get a variety of yeah. backgrounds. Of yeah. yeah. So you're there in the church. Do people in the locality think this is a church thing and it's nothing to do with the other agencies around? I think they they know that it's it's to do with our church because most of the people that that um, help us come from the church, the volunteers. Mm. We have a couple of people from the Salvation Army also who help. 
um, but they also know that there are community fridges elsewhere in the town so they know that it's a network of community fridges it just happens to be based here and run by by the church so volunteers what credentials do they need do they is there any training that they need to have no training we just make sure that they've had a dbs check mm -hmm. and uh, we chat them through what we need to do they just need to be friendly and uh, and be able to talk to people really so on a wednesday morning you're open from wait a moment i've got the i've got the the little very colorful leaflet here oh yes i yeah. don't know if those can see that uh, you're open for a couple of hours about how many people would you have come in during that time we usually have about 50 50 or so people coming through um yeah it's it's um it gets very busy at the very beginning we usually have people waiting outside at half past eight um a lot of them come on their way to take their children to school so they'll pop in with their children do a bit of shopping take their children to school um and by about quarter past nine i guess it's sort of tailed off a bit but we yeah we get about 50 people on average right and i guess some folks they'll come back and see you from time to time and you have regular visitors yes yeah we have a core group of people that we that we recognize and you know that they we have but we also serve tea and coffee so sometimes we sit and have a chat with them um of course helen who who runs the the cap service is there so if any of the people want to talk to her about anything to do with finance they can and then we get you know people that will come and go mm -hmm. where i was this morning uh, it was a, a similar venture to yours and i was asking a few questions about it again similarly where do folks come mm -hmm. from but from certain mm -hmm. postcode areas and that happened to be bn22 bn23 so are mm -hmm. you catering specifically for old town or could it be anybody it could be anybody a lot of the people that come are obviously from old town because they go take their children to the school opposite mm -hmm. but we do get people that come from other areas of the town as well you're in a very good position there for people really apart from the roadworks and the traffic lights at the moment at the moment yes it's it's a bit of a struggle to get in here but yeah we are we're on a bus route and we've got a big car park and yeah we're in a very good position now am i right in thinking that food bank provide their service free of charge and yet you ask people to make a small donation yes we do we ask for a donation of two pounds and for that two pounds they can take up to 10 items of food and the reason we ask them for a donation is a because not everybody is on you know on the bread line some people are using our service because they want to avoid food waste so they come along to support community venture and to also make sure that food that would normally go in the bin gets used up but also um because we have to pay fair share to deliver the food so the money gets you know gets used to pay for the food to, to come in in the first place obviously if anybody ever says they're really in need then we you know we we have a chat with them and we make appropriate um we don't necessarily charge them the whole amount no, quite, quite. this whole area of uh, food waste it's it's a big issue a big discussion at the moment mm. does it bug you very much it does i mean i must admit i'm i i hate throwing anything away last week i took there was lots and lots of bread for example last week at the fridge so i um bought some of it and i took it away and i made some lovely bread pudding and um, oh, say that again sandra <laughs> i love bread pudding <laughs> um oh. and there's always you can always make something out of the glut of stuff you've got so this week we had bananas so people were taking it away to make banana bread um, a couple of weeks ago, there were lots of carrots and parsnips, so people took them and made soup. And uh, we asked people that if they do make something really nice, to, to post it on our Facebook page so that we can have a look and see what they've done with it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, my mind's spinning here. I think <laughs> you've got a recipe book <laughs> about to yeah, be produced yeah. as well. I think. At, at People Matter, some years ago, uh, we used to receive donations of food mm. from one of the supermarkets. But that has stopped in recent days and i don't quite understand why no i mean we we're very fortunate in that we as long as well as paying to fair share we also collect food from the co-op oh. in albert parade 
once a week on the Tuesday evening. They, they provide us with quite a lot of baked goods, actually, that, that are going out of date. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lovely bakery along the road there, Poppy Seed Bakery, that give us something every week as well. Oh, that's um, one of my favourite ones. <laughs> yes, it's lovely there, isn't it? Um, but I think a lot of a lot of charities are collecting from supermarkets and it is quite hard to get a slot to go along and, and, and get them because they give out their food to different um, different charities every day of the week. Brilliant. So your church, along with many others, I, I find it fascinating just how many different organisations there are and people willingly give their time without any expectation mm, mm. Uh, or hope really because charities are often quite strapped for cash mm, so hope that's right hope of, of recompense of any sort and so how many people just out of interest uh, do you have actually setting out the food and meeting visitors and so on um so there's one two there's six of us on a wednesday morning somebody comes on a on a monday to help me sort out the fair share delivery to put it in the fridge and to to set it all up and then there are six of us on a Wednesday morning somebody takes the money and says hello to everyone the rest of us sort of mingle and chat and you know just point people in the right direction and then we have somebody making tea and coffee as well so it's quite a nice little group I should say that, that's, that's absolutely brilliant hmm. so it could be in the future we should need more of these um, projects like this which in some ways is rather sad but on the other mm. hand the volunteers rising to the occasion and supporting people around them uh, for whatever reason yes there we go well what next is there any area do you think in the in the charity world which is not being looked after at the moment um i don't know i mean i i worked for the food bank for a while as a volunteer and i've i found that the um the area that a lot of people needed help with was baby food, baby clothes, nappies, all those sorts of things that, you know, that, that the clothes children grow out of so quickly, baby milk, baby food, you know, it's, it's a, a consumable that is expensive. Mm. And um, I know that the food bank did have a certain amount of that, but I'm not sure that there are any, is anywhere in, in Eastbourne that does a specific um, baby and child um you know charity where they can where people can come along and and get hold of things like that if they're if they're struggling and i think that might be a good good way forward people might be hearing this and saying actually we do that but i don't know about it so um I'm sure it's something you know that, uh, that could be could, maybe could be pursued yes indeed well, it could quite be, as you say, when this goes out, that somebody will catch on and mm. see what they can do. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's marvellous. Well, we're getting there. I've asked you quite a lot of questions. Is there anything <laughs> else that you'd like to add? Um, I think just that um, we, we have about 150 members on our, on our um, books. So I think it does show that there is a need for this sort of thing. Uh, I do know that there are another couple of fridges in town. There's one in Langney and one in Seaside. Um, and we would love to open more often, but again, it's, it's to do with funding. So we had to buy a, a special fridge, which was quite a lot of money. We did get some funding from the council and we got some funding from our church as well. And we're always looking out for um, grants and things like that. Um, but to be able to pay for the food to come in that's our biggest expense so we'd have to have another another delivery um but you know if we got the volunteers and we got the the grants then maybe that's the, that's the way forward for us but at the moment we're just taking it as it comes and seeing how we go excellent well if anybody wanted more information the best thing they could do would be to pop along on a wednesday morning and find you i guess exactly yeah come along have a cup of tea and a chat and if you bring two pounds, you can go away with enough to make a meal for the evening. Wonderful. Sandra, thanks ever so much for talking to me. And You're welcome. I, hope, I hope you'll be feeling better in due course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so take care.
Chris will come back. There's something I just need to read before I go. And this is by way of saying who I am and how our podcasts can be, uh, how they can be heard, listened to. So again, everyone, thanks for listening. My name is Ray Dadswell. This has been Eastbourne.online. Thanks to my team, Chris Dabbs and the podcast studio for putting the podcast together. Don't forget, you can subscribe, listen again, or catch up with any of my previous interviews online on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your Alexa, or whatever, wherever you get your podcasts from. So thanks again. See you soon, hopefully.